Our next breakthrough speaker is Raghava KK. Raghava is a renowned artist who's also a five-time TED speaker. He's a member of the National Geographic Explorer Society, and in 2010, CNN named him one of the 10 most remarkable people. Raghava? Thank you. Hey, guys. How are you doing? A few more minutes before you get to the drinks. Um, thank you, BJ. Thank you, Ty, for bringing me here. I consider myself one of the most lucky people on Earth, simply because I believe I'm living a dream. Just think about it. A nice South Indian boy goes to his dad when I'm 17 years old, go to my dad and say, Appa, what is the purpose of education? And my dad looks at me and says, you know, Education is all about good citizenship. It's, it's about learning how to learn. He gave me a list, a beautiful list. I listened very carefully. I came back two weeks later and said, Pa, I decided I'm going to be hardworking, I'm going to be disciplined, I'm going to do all these things, and I'm going to be financially and emotionally independent of you guys. He was very happy. He came to give me a hug. I said, wait, hold that thought. Why do I have to go to school then? <laughs> I used the poor man's philosophy against him and quit formal education at 17 to become an artist. And, and I must give him credit because both my parents believed that I should be an artist. In fact, the way I learned art was I went and worked with children because children are the most creative creatures you'd ever meet. So I worked with kids and I did not even know how to paint. I want to show you how I painted when I first started. No brushes, no technique. Here's a quick movie. I used to dirty these large canvases and really, <laughs> thank you very much. I used to literally paint with my hands, feet, and everything else. But the most important thing was while I was traveling, I met this beautiful girl and fell madly in love. Now I'm 19 and I meet this beautiful girl and she's willing to be my girlfriend. And the first thing we did is we said, how do we live together? She had just got a learner's permit. We drove all over the East Coast and started selling paintings from our car. She made $60,000, more than I have ever seen in my life, and moved my backside to the United States. And we moved in together and started a career as an artist. Now, before you know it, I have a pile of children on top of me. Um, I'm about to have my fourth baby in, in a month. So I'm a prolific artist, as I promised. <laughs> And most importantly, I got a lot of attention. I grew as an artist. I had the most beautiful girl. I mean, what more can someone ask for? But unfortunately, my mother, who I loved so much, fell very sick. All of a sudden, my work and my life was not as crazy and exuberant. I started, I felt in my gut this depression. And my works turned very dark. All my collectors, Everyone left me. The Bollywood stars who bought my work were like, oh, no, thank you. And I had to ask myself, what defines success? I was making close to a million dollars a year as a 21-year-old. And now I was left with almost nothing. And so I came to the United States with my baby dog to start life again. And I asked myself, am I an artist? Am I defined by my success? By the amount of money I make, who collects my art? how well I can paint. But something very peculiar happened. I was invited to speak at the TED conference. It's a conference for ideas. And for the first time, I realized that as an artist, I see the world differently. I don't see the world the way everyone sees it. And as someone who's not been put into formal education, even more differently. And I realized I started working with some of the greatest thinkers and started contributing to how we see the world. I had an opportunity, as you can see. Could we have that slide up there? 
I had a chance to work with Paul Simon on the politics of aesthetics. I would spend time with politics, seeing, can we see emergent phenomena on data? And it excited me. I didn't realize I could do all of that. I don't see the, myself moving along the, um, from the past to the future. I see the future moving close towards me because I am the point of view of time. And if I am the point of view, I become a curator of the future. Now, I worked with neuroscientists to build my art in a different way. In fact, if you came to my exhibition and you wore a brainwave headset, you would start affecting the artwork. If you don't like the painting, she'll start crying. If you like the artwork, she'll start smiling. And if you get turned on, come to my show and you'll figure that out. <laughs> in fact, I worked with, with musicians to do an entire opera uh, based on brainwaves. And this is the first time I could bring science, art, and technology to really reimagine how we experience the world. But what the hell is an artist doing in Silicon Valley? I'm here to answer that question. In fact, I believe if 80% of our brains are used for visual processing, why is 80% of our knowledge verbal? There's a fundamental problem here. I want to build a more visual internet. And that's why I'm here. In fact, I'll tell you why. When we learn something through concepts, it's a double-edged sword. We can learn it very quickly, but the problem is we, we miss out on a lot of possibilities. Let me explain a little better. I want you to do a little exercise with me. Just close your eyes and imagine a triangle, just for two seconds. I bet all of you saw something that looked like this. But the truth is all of these are also triangles, but none of us bother to see the world like this. And the, if you had learned the triangle by only seeing many possibilities visually, you would have a much richer understanding of what a triangle meant. In fact, I've been homeschooling my kids and I teach them everything through pictures. And anyway, they're going to hate me when they grow up, so at least let me try some experiments on them. <laughs> um, don't tell them that. Um, my vision is to build a whole new visual internet. We've started dating with pictures. We've started buying st stuff with pictures. We've started even consuming news through pictures. We need to build a system that not depends, does not depend only on semantics, but also the visuals. In fact, I've been working with the Mass General Hospital at Harvard to reimagine the role of creativity in building knowledge systems. And the cool part is my brother did his SATs, went to Dartmouth, worked very hard and went to Harvard, did his PhD. I wrote a textbook without going to school. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I'm not the only person who thinks like this. I built this company called Flipsicle a year ago to build a visual internet. And one of our investors, John Maida, who works um, as the design partner at Kleiner Perkins, look at this chart for a second. In, in 2014, 20% of the top venture-funded companies had an artist or a designer as a co-founder. That says something. Look at merger and acquisitions. The top tech companies are actually buying design companies. I think we are in a creative age. And you know why? As John Maida beautifully says it, he says, earlier you wanted to make a consumer happy, give them a faster speed, better memory, and they're happy. But Moore's law does not cut it anymore. Because what people want is a place to express themselves. They want better consumer, better user experience. And that's the differentiator. In fact, I'm here to build a visual internet where uh, in fact, the future of e-commerce. I'm about to launch in six months the world's first visual e-commerce company. I'm not here to pitch, so I'm not going to tell you too much about that now. I'm here to tell you a little story that my father told me. When I was seven years old, you know, I don't know if there are many Tam Brahms here, but, but Timillion Brahmins, I don't know, a particular breed of people that put their kids through existential crisis at every dinner table. And my dad... He said, Raghava, he said, 
This is, I was seven years old. Okay, he says, Raghava, who are you? Said, Pa, I'm Raghava. He says, Serida, I'm the one who named you. If I change your name, will you change in front of me? I said, no. He said, then who are you? I said, I'm this person, this person. He said, every cell in that person changes every seven years. Who the hell are you? <laughs> seven years dinner, no appetizing, no puris going in, no dosas. Now, the one thing that I realized from that conversation, everything I answered him with was either changing or not me. He says, Raghava, you're a storyteller and you define yourself every day. So if I am a storyteller, I've come to this world to tell a big story, to see the world the way I see it and the way most of us see it as a visual internet. And I want this to be an epic visual story. Thank you so much. <laughs>